That's right. Thank you, Austin. Joined by UNLV tennis player Alexander Yodafuska. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. So let's just start about how you got into tennis. Because for people out there, tennis for Macedonia is like cricket for Americans. So how did you get into tennis? Well, I started playing very accidentally, actually. In my hometown, there was a tennis court that just, a tennis club that recently opened. And my parents wanted to actually get me involved in doing something besides school and taking all these piano lessons every once in a while. So, and I actually started playing tennis rel relatively late. I was nine, so just started playing once or twice a week just to do something in my life. And I actually really like it and started playing every day. And as I was practicing more and more, I, after one year, I played some tournaments and it happened that I beat the, the best girl in the local club. So my parents kind of get motivated from there and decide to move to, to the capital where I got uh, better conditions for practice, better coaches, and I got to play also better plays and it was better for, my, for developing my tennis career. Well, you played at a very high level. You had a career ranking of 466 in the world. What made you change from professional tennis to come play college tennis? Well, it was honestly, it was getting too, exp too expensive. If my parents couldn't handle the, the paying for every tournament because when you're on the WTA tour, you pretty much have to pay everything for yourself. And uh, I never considered going to college actually because I was sure that I'm gonna make it and I was really motivated, but things changed, so I just decided, my parents helped me decide, and it was a decision between either staying home and just going and starting to school and stopping tennis completely, because it was getting really hard. When you get above a level of 16, 17 years old, there are almost no professional players in Macedonia. So I had to decide between staying home and going to college. and. College was a better option because I got a good education, much better than back home, obviously. And I got to play tennis every day and still compete and just continue to do what I actually like to do. So that was the main reason. How was the transition from professional tennis to college tennis? Because I'm assuming it's a lot different. Yeah, it's definitely, there is almost nothing in common but the tennis, but it's like different rules, different limitations. Um, when you play on the WTA tour, you just pretty much travel alone with your coach and it's all about you. It's like 100% dedication to tennis. Like all you do is play tennis, focus on your matches, rest and that's all. And then when you come to college, it's different because then you have have to, to concentrate on two things at the same time, school and tennis. So you got to balance that and it's also like different rules of playing. It's 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 uh, on college. It's a team sport. It's not individual anymore because you have seven or eight other more teammates plus coaches, and you get to represent the university, which is quite a big thing. So, also the rules are different. The WTA tour, I never got a point penalty in my life. Actually, <laughs> college tennis, I got that every single match. So. Well, let's talk about you individually. You've just won the Mountain West, congratulations. Thank you. You also named Mountain West Player of the Year. What does that mean to you? Well, it's quite a big achievement for college tennis. Um, I'm happy to, to win that prize and obviously to win with my team. I mean, anyone from the conference can win Player of the Year, but I guess I'm the lucky one this year. And the conference is just a huge thing for us because we were a little disappointed by the regular season because we had we lost two matches they were quite close 4-3 in the deciding match so we're just motivated and we went for it and it actually worked out well for us. How much pressure guys I think we've got some Mountain West pitches of you winning the Mountain West but um, how much pressure is it being you being ranked 35 in the nation being the number one player how much and being a leader as well how much pressure does that put on you? Well, if you mention all these things, like number one, 35, it sounds like a huge deal. So if you think of that, yeah, it's quite a lot of pressure. But once you go out on the court, it's different. You just like concentrate on your match and you, you, you just have to forget about all these things, what you mentioned, because otherwise it's going to be really hard to handle. So it's, it's a lot of pressure, but from one side, it just motivates me a lot to just keep improving and doing what, what I have and just win for my team and make my teammates and my coach and, 
and the school proud of me and happy with our win. So. And what what does the future hold for you? What is this for you, your junior? What is next for you? Our next upcoming is actually the NCAA. We made it through winning the conference tournament. We automatically got into the NCAA. We're, gonna, we're playing first round against Tulsa, so we're looking forward to it. We think that we got quite a nice draw. It's not the hardest. So, and then after that, it comes the NCAA individuals. I mean, it's a big challenge to get to play against the 50, 60 best ranked players We're going to have to stop there, unfortunately. But uh, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> thank you. Now we're going to take a time, quick time break. And uh, when we come back, Austin sits down with UNLV Sports Bandage graduate. Stay tuned. <laughs> 